Here is a news flash from the Von D. Globe round the world race. Linked out has taken water into their bow compartment. This evening, French time, Thomas Ryant, who is lying in second place in the Von D. Globe, has slowed his boat to a near halt after discovering that the front bow compartment of his Amoka linked out was filling with water. Shortly before 2100 hours TU he has engaged both his main pumps to drain this usually watertight compartment. The bulkhead doors are closed and so the main living space on the boat is not affected. As soon as the water is fully evacuated, Ryan will make a complete examination of the boat to make a definitive diagnosis of the problem. End of release. First it was Alex Thompson in Hugo Boss with a front end breakdown, now linked out. It seems that the foiling boats have experienced new areas of compression not normally associated with these types of boats. When coming off their foils, or in big seas, they seem to crash back down putting huge loads on the front of the yacht. Some have predicted this, and before the race have bolstered up their bow sections. Currently linked out is south of Australia's Tasmania, and is in second position to Yannick Bistaven, Matercock 4. More as it comes to hand, and we wish him all the best. This is the Sailing World on Water, December 18, 2020. Last night another Amoka 60 leading Vondi Globe yacht, has had a major problem as Thomas Royas and then linked out has found his forward compartment full of water. We look at the history of the America's Cup and reprise today's races. We preview the 2021 Rolex Fastnet race, which finishes for the first time in France. In Sydney Ian Smith boats cover the historical 18-footer sprints and it's day four and final day of the Sail Sydney Regatta. We catch up with North Sail's Paul Westlake and Mark Bradford, for their end-of-year look at the sport of sailing, globally for the coming year. The Von D. Globe fleet are entering the Pacific Ocean, and here is their weather report as Boris Herman has a five-boat meet-up in the Southern Ocean. What a wonderful sight! 170 years that's a long time. 170 years ago today, the first car was still 35 years off. The Wright brothers' first flight, 52. That's 10 years before the start of the American Civil War. Times change, so they say. The America's Cup. The symphony of sea and sky and sail. A hundred and seventy years ago, the oldest trophy in world sport was won for the very first time. A sailing race around the Isle of Wight in England. A radical looking yacht called America beat the British on home waters and took the trophy back to the United States. The story of the America's Cup had begun. <rire> Ce qui est bien, c'est que c'est un port en eau profonde et que tu peux accueillir des gros bateaux. Quoi. Des émoucas qui peuvent venir. C'est déjà un plaisir de revenir à Cherbourg. Euh, bah, il y a dix ans, moi, j'ai gagné ma deuxième solitaire. C'est vrai que c'est un super plan d'eau euh, très technique. The Australian historical 18-footers held their annual sprint races on December the 12th. Three races were held around a triangle with legs of about a nautical mile each.
normal handicaps were divided by three, so the limit boats started off five minutes. It was a blustery day on Sydney Harbour and only three boats finished all three races. Scott withdrew after the first race with a broken rudder fitting. Topweight and Yendis thought better of it after the first race and retired. Britannia broke a running backstay during the second race, jury rigged and went home. Tengaluma capsized on the way to the start. Here's some more shots from the first two races. Britannia's forward hand Gary Clubley prepares the balloon for the next leap. Australia 4 won the first two races and the series. But they were beaten by the mistake in the third, but only because they couldn't set a spinnaker off their broken bumpkin end. Aberdeer was the only other boat to finish. A fitting end to 2020, a bugger of a year. Definitely has been good having the girls. Uh, um, we obviously don't race against them at all, so um, having that different, you kind of get used to your competitors, so having that different perspective has been quite good. Um, Emma's been super close to getting me in one race, um, but just couldn't get there. <laughs> uh, but I think today might be a different story and we'll yeah, have to work hard to try to keep it behind me. Yeah, obviously in Europe the situation is pretty dire at the moment. Um, so when I got the opportunity to spend uh, time with Matt, my fiancé at the moment, um, I took it with both hands. And um, yeah, it's been great. I mean, the weather's been perfect. Um, the Australian sailing team has been very rewarding and very friendly. So um, it's been a great venue to train. And now some racing. So uh, that's exciting too, against the boyfriend, fiance, may I add? Yeah. You're gonna take a win for him? <laughs> I'll try to, <laughs> if he's not too far ahead. like big fleet we didn't expect this many boats but it's really good um it's like a national size fleet so yeah it's really fun the breeze we've had has been good but in the spot we're in it's been a bit hard with all the shifts and the amount of congestion especially yesterday we had such a skinny course so it was really hard with all the boats around on the harbour so it's definitely been a challenge but it's really good to get back into it Uh, yeah, I mean the results look good for us but it was really close racing and just really happy that we got so many 49ers here in Australia to race against. So fortunate seeing as we can't go overseas it's, uh, it's just really, uh, really great to see everyone come out. Obviously, um, you know, everyone's in the same boat with the Olympics being um, put back a year and um, it's really just who can make the most of that extra time. And, we're lucky in Australia, you know, we've got great sailing conditions all year round. 
and a really good squad. So, um, you know, we're in as good a position as anyone. Well, it's that time of the year again. We're in North Sales Loft in Sydney, and we've got uh, Paul Westlake and uh, Mark Bradford, uh, Flipper and Squark, and uh, we've got a couple of big news pieces of news today, and we're going to run through a few of what's going on this this Christmas time as far as sailing is concerned. So, guys, uh, welcome back to the World on Water. Thanks, Thanks, sir. Thanks for having us. And uh, first off, uh, Mark, uh, congratulations on uh, your appointment. Thank you. You'd like to tell us what's happened? Oh yeah, well so uh, Coco aged out on us <laughs> and uh, you know we sent him off to the glue factory and, and uh, I came in from Queensland. I've been with the company for 20 odd years so uh, I you know, filled in his shoes and uh, basically I just stepped into a well oil machine and I've taken over his job. Exactly and, um, and what do you do as far as your sailing is concerned? You're still, uh, still with the uh, the Blackjack team? Yeah, all well, sailing, steak and veg for me, so it's still, uh, etchels are close to my heart and I dedicated a little bit of time to that. Probably, I probably should dedicate more to it. You'll see that in As the much results. time as Coco did or what? <laughs> oh, yeah, over the years probably. Over the years probably, <laughs> but right now, you know, I should do more for sure. But etchels are a part of my life and also Blackjack and the Sydney to Hobart. And uh, what about you, uh, Flippo? What are you doing as far as the international side is concerned? Yeah, well, it's been a busy year, Jeff. Obviously, uh, I decided to jump back on the fastest flight out of the Caribbean when I was uh, there with uh, Svea with the J-Class after we'd done the first Super Series event in Cape Town with the TP-52s. A bunch of us all went to the Caribbean to pick up there. And then obviously with COVID, um, you know, there was a mass rush to the airport and we all bailed out and um, I've been landlocked so to speak since uh, you know the end of March um, but it's been busy times for the company globally you know we've had to do a bunch of kind of a uh, bit of restructuring a bit of looking at ourselves looking at the you know what we what we thought the size of the market would be and our revenue base for this year going into next year we kind of run the business off a a one year, three year, five year plan. So there's a bit of, there's been a lot of uh, late nights and uh, a lot of video conferencing. Pretty good with, uh, you know, with uh, looking good at uh, three in the morning. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a challenge, but I can't say I miss the flying. But, um, you know, so far we've managed to get through this year well. We feel very good about how we're finishing the year up as a company. And I think that the industry's uh, looking pretty good for a, a bit of a reboot in 2021. You, uh, you mentioned the TPs, what's the story for 21 for the TPs? Yeah, well the, the uh, Super Series did a nice job of trying to kind of keeping it um, alive as each of the critical uh, dates and cutoffs. Um, fantastic commitment from the owners, each of the owners involved with the, uh, the circuit really tried to push the whole way through. Reality is it just wasn't uh, realistic. Uh, but the full season uh, set up for next year, we start off in uh, Saint-Tropez um, beginning of May. And uh, already, I just got a note um, overnight. There's a, a training, a friendly training session set up in Valencia, uh, like the second to third week of April. Gives everybody time to get together, test stuff out over kind of an eight-day period, and then the boats head up to Santa Fe, and off we go. So, TP52 and RC44, which are two of the top, let's call it mono-hull displacement um, circuits, are uh, ready to go next year. Oh, that's good. Well, I suppose with the, the being in the pandemic area this year, that you've had time to think about what you're going to do as far as next year and plan new projects. Have you got anything in the uh, the offering as far as new projects are concerned? Yeah, well, I, I think at that uh, very high end, uh, the likes of the TP52 and the RC44, we've done like uh, we've done a lot of development uh, over the winter coming into the spring for this year, and. You know, through the course of the summer, even though we didn't have the racing uh, going on in Europe, we still had the ability to test a bunch of stuff. Quite a few boats still uh, sailed. And uh, then even uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, like Brunonisec, the team that I'm involved with, we're out in the water in uh, Valencia and just having a look at a couple of ideas we have for next season. I know other teams have been doing the same. So I think um, what's happening with 2021 is it's just going to be a logical extension of where everybody was uh, come spring of 2020. 
because there's a bunch of uh, qualification of ideas that still has to be done on the water. There's only so much we can model. Hey, before we get on to uh, the big news of the day as far as the Vonde is concerned, the America's Cup, uh, Squark, it's been quite interesting what's happened in the last couple of weeks locally as far as the uh, the big boats are concerned. You've had your moments and uh, how are you f looking for the Hobart race? Oh, you look, for sure, um, you know, our expectations of our team are very similar to the expectations that others have of our team and that is we run a high-end project with we don't want for anything and we have great sailors and we put a lot of thought and resources into what we're doing so you know I'm sure people some people have been enjoying our results lately I can tell you we haven't been um, but the great thing about it is the boats are so different when you lose in your weakness or your weakest area you learn a lot and um, you know if anyone thinks we're resting on our laurels they'll be surprised because we've resized a bunch of our sails we've changed our configuration reaching and uh, we'll start again in a couple of days and try and validate that before the race. So it's currently a bit of a drag race for Boris on board, on board Sea Explorer Yacht Club de Monaco. He's part of this second group here um, of five boats that you can see are just trying to stay ahead of this front, which is marked quite clearly on the, uh, on the weather models. Here we have the GFS model at 7.15 ETC. And they're currently sailing in this north westerly wind um, ahead of the front sailing very quickly towards the uh, towards the east and there's also this front pack here which are well ahead of the front so they'll be able to hold on to that for um, the next 24 hours or so while this back pack which boris is in will only have it for the next few hours um, we can see quite clearly this front on the satellite images here we have the infrared and you can see it really nicely marked by this um, by this cloud so this would be a really good indication for boris to see when the wind will shift round to the uh, southwest on the other side and he'll have to jive down like this towards the ice gate which is just running along, along here um, but we can have a look at what the weather's going to be like in, ahead of this um, so here we have the uh, this is this this is right now and we can have a look at some of the features so we can see there's this very strong low here um, up to the north east of the fleet um, up by um, Tasmania and basically what's going to happen is this low is going to move down towards the southeast and kind of well ahead of the fleet um, and, and in, in its wake, you'll be left with this, um, with quite a light, high, high pressure area, um, which is going to be quite complicated um, because you're obviously stuck between the ice gate and the high and the, the light winds to the north. So, um, if we skip forward 24 hours, we can see how that low pressure has moved out the way, and you can see this high pressure starting to form behind it. Not much gradient at all, not much wind, very complicated. Um, and if we go forward another two days, so this is 72 hours from now. We can see how this high pressure has completely formed now and uh, as a result of being forced to sail very far south to, to get around the high pressure you can see Boris is going to be forced to jive back and forth closely along the ice gate to stay in the best wind possible so between him and the five other boats around him it's going to be a bit of a uh, maneuvers battle who can keep up the, the highest number of jibes to stay in the best wind um, but also to manage themselves because this isn't going to be a quick process it will be over um, two to three days, so they're going to have to keep up their energy levels through the whole time. If we overlay the uh, the routing of Matricock, Yannick Bestevin, who's currently in first, we can see that uh, the leaders, although they're going to have this nice patch of, uh, of of good wind sailing as they're ahead of the front for the next 24 hours or so, beyond this, they're going to be even more trapped by this high pressure. They're going to do uh, be jiving from here all the way to to here, so they'll be jiving for the next um, four or five days potentially. So. Um, it's going to be a bit more work for them and uh, we'll have to see how it affects the standings and affects Boris's distance to first place. Look who we found! Damien Seguin Apicil. And then look who we found! Bureau Valley, Louis Burton. Yeah. Water family, Benjamin Dupont, Jean Le Cam, yes we can. Il y a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bateaux, 5 bateaux ensemble. C'est complètement fou ça. Ha! Il prend des photos aussi, <rire> comme des touristes.
<laughs> what an incredible moment. <clears throat> Five boats meeting in the Indian Ocean halfway around the world. Just like this. <clears throat> Completely unheard of, I think. We're like three boat lengths apart and two, 300 meters to the other. And draw maybe two miles. We will have our aperitif together now. Well, once I've finished this, I'm still like uh, fiddling around with my <laughs> making my new uh, car here for the cassette, the upper bearing of the cassette to put this thing back into back into place. And at the same time, I have to look out to not crash into him. <laughs> Very funny. Love it. Now it feels like a race. Not so lonely anymore, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 